sure the coldest temperature ever recorded was in Antarctica, and it was an amazing minus 89.2 degrees centigrade. See your world differently. Blue Peter. Don't miss Blue Peter tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock. Simon's going to be given his latest presenter challenge. What will it be? It's 5.25, it's CBBC One, and right now it's time for all the latest. Here's Liesl with Newsrank. This is News Round. Hi, welcome to the programme. Our top stories this afternoon. How downloading tunes from the internet could mean an end to new music talent. Plus the Olympic countdown, the flame is lit for this year's games. First, the record industry is warning that the music business is in crisis and they're partly blaming lots of you. Millions of people are now downloading their music online, but hardly anyone is paying for it. And experts say the situation is only going to get worse. There's been another massive drop in single sales, according to the record industry, and they say the reason is downloads from the internet. They also say that most of the downloads are illegal. It's mostly people like you doing it, and the result is lots of your favourite bands are losing lots of money. Do you think that fans should be able to download anything they want? Do you know what? No. Like, I think it's like, in a way, it's killing the industry, because like, they can download for nothing, which means the artists don't make money out of sales, because they can just download it for nothing. So I, that, I think that, that downloading one track of an album is a good way to preview the album. Yeah. Downloading a whole album is just taking a bit too far. With faster internet connections, a big growth in music websites and file sharing software, downloading tracks from the internet isn't going away, whatever the record industry wants. I feel as if I'm wasting my money on buying albums or singles that, you know, um, on albums that are half, half the tracks I don't really like, you know. And on the internet, it's so free, you can just go on there, surf, and it's free. I really feel like, like, guilty about all the artists losing loads of money because they already get millions and millions of pounds. I do feel a bit guilty buying and downloading it from the internet because groups, they don't really get as much money. Certainly the perception is out there that it's the greedy record industry, but the real reality here is that there's been a massive, massive effect on sales. It's the new artists coming through that are most threatened by this, because if record companies can't continue to invest in new music, then that music simply won't be there. In America, some are predicting that if things go on like this, buying singles over the counter could all but disappear in the next three years. So unless downloaders start to pay, the record industry says we may never see the next generation of new bands. Next, shaking hands with one of Britain's biggest former enemies. Today, our Prime Minister flew to Libya in the Middle East to meet its leader. He's a man who supported terrorism and been linked to an attack that killed hundreds of people. So why are we being so friendly? Laura has the details. This is Colonel Gaddafi, the leader of Libya. Fifteen years ago, he was as big an enemy to Britain as Saddam Hussein was in Iraq. But today, Tony Blair went to meet him to talk about how our two countries can become friends. It's all because Gaddafi has agreed to change his behaviour and get rid of some of his weapons. This is Lockerbie, a small town in Scotland. In 1988, a plane flying from London to America blew up over the town, killing everyone on board and 11 people on the ground. There'd been a bomb on board. Two Libyans were suspected and Gaddafi eventually handed them over to be put on trial. One was later found guilty. One of the reasons the British government is talking to Gaddafi now is because he's agreed to pay compensation to the families of the people who died. But the Lockerbie attack wasn't the only reason the world was angry with and scared of Libya and its leader. Gaddafi also used to provide weapons for terrorists all over the world. Until now, many politicians here and abroad have refused to have anything to do with him and his country. And not everyone is happy about today's meeting. They say it's wrong for Tony Blair to be friendly with someone who's behaved so badly in the past. But the government says it's the best way to make sure Libya becomes a peaceful country in the future. The Olympic flame has been lit, marking the start of the official countdown to this year's Games. The world's most famous sporting event kicks off in Athens in August. But with the clock ticking, there are still big worries the Greek city won't be ready in time. Laura has the story. 
Greece hosted the very first Olympic Games nearly 3,000 years ago. And today the Olympic flame was lit in the ruins of the ancient stadium where it all began. Hosting this year's Olympics is a big deal for Athens, but getting the city ready hasn't been easy. Building work on the venues where thousands of athletes will compete has fallen behind. This is what the new arena should look like, but so far only 24 out of 38 of them are finished. And last week plans to build a roof over the main Olympic swimming pool were scrapped because it won't be ready in time. So what happens next? Well, the Olympic torch is off on its own journey called a relay across the five Olympic continents. While it's gone, the Greek authorities will be racing against time to be ready for the opening ceremony. Next, what programmes do you like watching on TV? Sport? Music? Drama? Maybe some news? Well, the government wants your opinions on how they can improve kids' programmes on the BBC. Here are our press packers, Stacey and Julian, with details on how you can get involved in the future of television. A brand new season on Fox Kids. Never in the history of television have kids have more choice in what programmes they watch. There are loads of different channels to choose from, especially if you have cable or satellite, but are you getting the programmes you want to watch? The BBC alone provides hours of kids' TV every day and has digital channels for younger and older kids. Twenty years ago, there were just a couple of hours of kids' TV a day. So with so much kids' TV out there, the government want you to tell them what sort of programmes you'd like to see on the BBC. There are a tremendous number of services that the BBC offers. We want to know what people think about all or any of them. BBC channels are different to all others because they're paid for by a licence fee, which your mum and dad pay every year. That's why there are no ads during BBC programmes. But with so many kids' channels out there, why should people be forced to pay for the BBC? Some people say it's because they provide programmes like News for Kids that you don't get on any other channel. So if you've got an opinion on what kind of programmes the BBC should be showing, you can contact the government through the Newsround website. Or write to them at the following address. Charter Review Team, Culture Department, 2-4 Coxburgh Street, London, SW1Y, 5DH. And finally, some footy news. The top two teams in the Premiership, Arsenal and Chelsea, faced each other last night in the first leg of their Champions League quarter-final clash. The final score was one all after goals from Goodjohnson and Perez. Both teams will now meet again for the second leg in two weeks' time. Well, that's it from me, but you can catch up with more Newsround headlines over on the CBBC channel at 5 to 7. And I'll be back here live at 5.25 tomorrow. See you then. Bye-bye. Dick and Dom are lodging it in the bungalow. Saturday mornings from 9 on CBBC One. But there's only three weeks left, so don't miss out. Pick up the bungalow, Massey. Three weeks to go, what are we going to do? I don't know. <gasps> now, if you tune over to the CBBC channel right now, Exchange is just starting. Over there, you can catch up with Jean and Joe, who are giving you tips on how to be fashionable on a budget. Are you going to watch that? Hey, Cheeky, I'm back tomorrow afternoon with Angelica. 3.45 with Blue Peter, Scooby-Doo, Intergalactic Kitchen. Have a good night. Bye. See ya. <laughs> To find out how to get the CBBC channel on cable, satellite and freeview, call 08700 101010.